Welcome to 5 Star Weekly, a perfect week, 9 points out of 9. The Gonzalo Pineda era is off to a sterling start. Can we continue our form with yet another 6-pointer over the weekend? We get all that more, coming up. Welcome to the show, 5 Star Fam, I'm AJ. And wherever it is you get your pods, subscribe, share, and leave us a good rating. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. We've got a double match review, so let's get right into it as soon as possible here. So first up is FC Cincy. And yeah, we tore them apart in scoreline and we definitely, in the fifth minute, uh, yeah, opened it up really, really well. Luis Araujo. He started off his goal account with Atlanta United with an absolute ridiculous goal. I mean, my God, uh, Alan Franco finds him uh, into uh, his back against goal. But uh, yeah, I mean, the turn from Araujo, he gets away from four defenders and pretty much it's a breakaway and a race to the goal and no one can catch up. And Aruju, he finds that far, far post, uh, yeah, just uh, with a plum. And it is a finessed shot that uh, some say is reminiscent of a Miggy run. And I would say, I mean, it might be better than a Miggy run because I don't remember Miggy finishing it with that type of finesse and that type of cool head in front of goal. You know, uh, Miggy as fantastic of a player as he was for Atlanta United, you know, in front of goal, maybe not always the coolest. I mean, Aruju, I would argue here that, uh, you know, his touches and him slowing down in the box allowed him to uh, be able to find that far corner and, uh, and that side netting. And it's, oof, this is chef's kiss, that type of good goal. But, uh, yeah, starts off well. Uh, yeah, FC Cincy kind of uh, get a little bit back in the game a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, we get a little bit maybe complacent with uh, the type of play that we, uh, you know, exude after that. But, uh, yeah, you know, we... <laughs> We kind of uh, get a little lackadaisical through Alan Franco here, and uh, yeah, Brenner, uh, therefore, since he's forward, could have gotten a goal if he had been more clinical uh, off of Alan Franco's mistake there at the back. Uh, and yeah, I mean, despite you know that little bit of an error from Alan Franco, Alan Franco had a ridiculous uh, assist match in this, uh, you know, three assists. Uh, to finish it out, that's most by a defender, most uh, in a game by an Atlanta United player. So definitely, uh, yeah, I mean, he had a really great match, <laughs> that error aside. But uh, yeah, you know, with Araujo, I think we have to, you know, talk more again about how, uh, you know, he he seemed very, very hungry throughout any of the matches that he's played and he has wanted to score he you see the frustration and uh you know for him to score this type of goal uh should be yeah something that i think uh you know ups his confidence and he should be uh you know the it should be the first of many for Araruju. but uh yeah in uh getting to our other goals uh yeah two of the other Four goals that came from Atlanta United came from Joseph Martinez, and it was his 97th and 98th goal uh, in his 100th appearance, his 100th regular season appearance. And uh, yeah, he of those 100 matches, he's started 93. He's at 85 goals uh, to start this match uh, in regular season play, and so it's. Yeah, I mean, it's just prime Joseph. Uh, it's just really, really great stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, in terms of uh, that goal, basically it was, uh, you know, a free kick. Araruju uh, took that free kick 
And uh, yeah, it was one to the far post where Franco, he was able to get Ariel with his foot, uh, kick it over to Joseph Martinez. And yeah, Joseph Martinez knew exactly what to do with it, found his head and found the back of the net. But uh, yeah, we went up 2-0 in the 40th minute then. And then Martinez, uh, after the half, uh, he scored his next goal in the 55th minute. Uh, Ezekiel Barco, he found Jose Martinez on the counterattack and with a beautiful through ball. I mean, really just threaded the needle there. And Jose Martinez knew exactly what to do with it. Yeah, he slipped it through a pair of FC Cincy defenders. Thierry Henry-esque to the far post with his right foot. And, ooh, yeah, I mean, that's that's that uh, that Joseph that we know. And that was 3-0. And, uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, you know, we all expected, yeah, it was easy-peasy at that point, right? Uh, but we... Yeah, topped it off with more icing on the cake. Barco, he sealed it with a free kick. Our first free kick since Kevin Kratz. Uh, and that was in 2018. So that's uh, quite a while. But uh, yeah, glad that Barco could do it. And uh, yeah, I mean, this match, it's, uh, you know, when you had, um, you know, the kind of, the starting 11 that uh, included, I mean, this was probably our best 11, probably, uh, that we could have fielded this season. Um, you know, very interesting, I think, uh, if you kind of look at that. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, really, really great match from uh, the boys. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, you know, Mateus has said to... Uh, you know, being in the middle there without without a defensive midfielder because Sosa was out with yellow card accumulation. I mean, you're not going to be able to probably uh, maybe field this type of 11 every single match because this is a very poor FC Cincy side. And also, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a death lineup. I mean, when you don't have a defensive midfielder, uh, you're, yeah. You know, in this kind of match, you can get away with it. But uh, going forward, obviously, against the really good teams, maybe not so much, but we'll absolutely take it. I mean, this obviously helped us to get this 4 0 win, though. And um, yeah, so uh, getting into some of the uh, maybe, uh, yeah, the stats. Uh, yeah, I mean, we pretty much thoroughly dominated this match 15 shots to their 11 and um yeah i mean you know 10 open play uh kind of chances uh 15 yeah i mean it's 26 percent conversion rates on our uh, on our goals it's a uh, yeah uh, a pretty good percentage as well but uh yeah let's wrap this uh, match up and get into DC United and DC United uh, this match definitely uh, builds as I mean we're, we're kind of the underdog in this one we're seventh versus their fifth and uh, DC United have definitely been flying high this season uh, but yeah I mean to start off this match yeah we are uh, you know looking pretty good uh, but in the 18th minute, Ezekiel Barco, he scores yet another free kick. Two matches in a row. And uh, yeah, Kevin Kratz is, I'm sure, ecstatic uh, that you know, someone is joining him in Kratz country. But yeah, uh, you know, this match uh, looks maybe on the scoreline a lot tighter than maybe it actually was. But, you know... Uh, there was at one point it was 2-1 but uh, yeah so Barco though 1-0 with that excellent free kick that's top bins beats Bill Hamid which I mean as much trash that Bill Hamid talked about Brad Guzan I mean you know I think he deserved it I think uh, Bill Hamid uh, you know he he did stand on his head on the 
uh, on the balls that he could get to. But I think uh, you know we were just too much for him against. I think what's uh you know DC United uh, this season anyway. I think historically they've been a pretty good defensive side, but this. This DC United side, a little bit leaky at the back, and we definitely took advantage of it. But uh, Joseph Martinez, he scored the second goal on a through ball, again from Barco. And uh, yeah, he was able to find the back of the net with his left foot. I mean, again, right foot, left foot, his head, uh, penalties. I mean, this man has it all. But uh, yeah, um, you know... What was interesting, this is the third match in seven days for LA United, and uh, Miles Robinson was given a break, and Luis Araujo started on the bench, and yeah, I mean, it was definitely maybe a little more uh, kind of smash and grab at points, uh, as we found it from, uh, you know, a set piece and a counterattack, but I think, uh, you know, when fatigue starts to set in, yeah, you kind of start to maybe uh, you know, play smartly and a little bit more pragmatically. And I think that's what uh, was done here by Gonzalo Pineda, and it was to good effect. And uh, George Campbell, yeah, he got his third straight start, and uh, you know he's looked really, really good and comfortable in the center back position. But uh, yeah. There was definitely uh, DC United. They uh, they brought good high pressure against us, uh, and then you know for their first goal, it was uh, yeah a little ball floated in by Julian Gressel. That I mean yeah, <laughs> Felipe Mertens uh, he definitely he knew what to do with it on the volley, and uh, it was a ball that was always going to go in the back of the net. Uh, I think Brad Guzan had nothing he could do with it. I mean, it was well hit. Full credit to them. But, uh, and then, uh, yeah, for us, I mean, 87th minute, uh, Marceline Moreno, yeah, he gets the ball over the top. And, oh my God, I mean, he beats five defenders. Uh, a nutmeg here, a uh, ball forward where he, you know, chases onto it. And uh, he gets into the box, beats his man again. Finds George Bello for the tap in, and yeah, oh, this Marcelino Moreno. I mean, go off, son. He has been, I think, our most solid player this entire season, our most consistent. Uh, definitely, you know, our MVP, I feel like, uh, of this season because I mean, it is just some, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's I would say messy like, but I mean you know this is uh, this is stuff that you know uh, I think Argentinians j they just alike they know how to do it feels like, but uh, yeah if you uh, can make the ball stick at your feet I mean you can make a lot happen and Moreno oh boy yeah he definitely knew what to do uh, with the ball here and yeah he. Gets us our third goal, which, uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely, uh, in this type of match, seems like we needed it because, uh, yeah, DC United, they hit another banger, and uh, it's just, yeah, I mean, this, this, uh, this game had a lot of great goals, and maybe Jose Martinez, his goal was the worst of the bunch, which... I think speaks to it. I mean, that's ridiculous. The uh, the quality of goals in this match, but uh, yeah, you know, I thought we did uh, really, really well in creating a number of uh, you know the type of chances. Uh, you know, our possession wasn't super high, but uh, yeah, you know, we definitely uh, I think did a lot of what uh, I think was necessary to. Pretty much see out this match and uh it was a tough one but you could see it from the elation in the team after the match uh i mean they joined the fans on the capo stand uh i think maybe urged on by gonzalo pineda or others but either way uh yeah the team has been doing really well in clapping the fans at the bends after each match but they took it to another level and you love to see it. 
They, uh, yeah, Alan Franco got on the megaphone as well as uh, everyone chanting Bamos ATL. And uh, yeah, whew, you know, I think you see the connection starting to build, um, you know, kind of last year devoid of that fan interaction. I think a lot of fans fell off, but I think this is really starting to, I think, uh, kind of build and kind of uh, connect that bridge to the fans back again. But uh, one negative was that Joseph Martinez, he stayed on the pitch on the ground after the match. He was looked at by physios. It was uh, his knee that was giving him some trouble. So definitely uh, something that we hope he is doing well. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll recover before the next match. But uh, getting into some post-match quotes, yeah, Kevin Kratz, he talked on Barco's free kick goal against DC United. Uh, he said, quote, that was a proper free kick. And, uh, yeah, Barco, he put on a free, click, free kick clinic. It was definitely, wow, uh, very Kevin Kratz-esque. Not quite two in one game like he did against New England Revolution, but uh, boy, yeah, this is definitely uh, in that territory for sure. But uh, we'll wrap up this match, and hopefully the uh, the form continues. But the next match will be against Philadelphia Union on Saturday. It will be at PPL Park at 3:30 p.m., and we'll have that match review later on for you in the show. But let's get into the news and looking at the standings. LA United, they're in sixth. They're right underneath Montreal in fifth. Orlando in fourth. Right above Philly in seventh. And DC, with that loss, they bump all the way down to eighth. So it's tight. It's very tight in the uh, the playoff spots currently. So yeah, it's all to play for until decision day, I'm sure. But uh, getting into... Uh, the plaudits from the week, Ezekiel Barco makes another MLS Team of the Week, and he was up for the MLS Goal of the Week, as well with George Bello, who also made the MLS Team of the Week. Uh, his goal was also up for the Goal of the Week, and as uh, the Atlanta United fans do, uh, Ezekiel Barco won the MLS Goal of the Week. So, uh, you know, still... Fairly uh, undefeated, uh, or maybe just really, really good record in these uh, MLS Gold a Week votes. But uh, yeah, getting into uh, some fantastic news in the sense where, yeah, the team held an open training session for supporter group, uh, you know, fans, and it was on Tuesday. It was amazing, uh, Gonzalo Pineda. He uh, yeah, really said a heartfelt message about the connection with the fans uh, and wanting to uh, do more of these open training sessions, possibly one before the end of the season. But uh, yeah, it was definitely very cool to see, uh, you know, not only the fans be able to chant at the training grounds as the team was practicing, but also, yeah. It was Ronald Hernandez's birthday uh, that day, and yeah, no cake nor player is safe when uh, it's their birthday, it seems. Gonzalo Pineda is encouraging some fun as well at the training grounds. A big far cry from the Hainsey days, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, Joseph Martinez uh, had to leave early from the training. Uh, they, uh, they asked, uh, the media asked if there was an MRI and there was no update on that, unfortunately, but, uh, yeah, you know, Joseph Martinez did a few light drills, so we'll see if he takes a part on the weekend, but, uh, yeah, Brooks Lennon, he, uh, was quoted in the media as saying, if I'm any other team in MLS, I'm not wanting to play LA United right now, and I think he's absolutely right, I mean, that's, uh, you know, we are in some scintillating form and hopefully we can continue that. I mean, obviously, you know, this kind of, maybe not obviously, but it does, I think, uh, you know, this September kind of harken back to that 2017 September where we played so many matches at the Benz with sh such short rest and we were uh, flying high. I mean, I think you see the team is healthy. We're able to, uh, I think, uh, really get in good form. Not only that, but I think build a lot of chemistry so far, and it's been really, really, really helpful. Getting into another big piece of news uh, is that 
CONCACAF, they've announced a new structure for the uh, CCL. And uh, yeah, there will be essentially uh, from 2023 onwards, three regional cup competitions that will be played in the fall of each year and will qualify clubs into the CCL. And uh, essentially it will match up teams in MLS and Liga MX. And uh, basically, yeah, it's it's massive. I mean, this is it's gonna change a lot of things. Uh, it will be a completely reimagined League's Cup. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, Seattle just played in the League's Cup as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be very interesting if essentially a month is gonna be taken off uh, for each team to be playing in this tournament. And um, yeah. I, you know, there will be years where we'll have a World Cup, we will have, uh, you know, Euros, we'll have uh, Copa Americas, you know, all that, Gold Cups, all those things, and I, that will be a very, very busy summer for a lot of players, and so, yes, uh, a lot of the MLS salary structure will have to change, but these are all with, uh, these, you know, moves are all done with eyes on bringing more revenues and eyeballs to Liga MX and MLS, of course. And so, you know, uh, it makes sense that they're doing it. It's, uh, you know, I think they've been angling to do something like this to begin with, uh, you know, since the Campeones Cup, since, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, conversations uh, that have been had between the two leagues. And so, yeah, it's been bound to go in this direction anyway. Is it good for the league? I mean, I I think so. It's going to bring better players uh, from, I think, you know, 5 or 4 to 11 uh, in terms of uh, any starting 11. The quality will be raised, so that will be very good, I feel like. But, uh, you know, is it going to be good on the players? Yeah, we need more depth, and this could be a step in the right direction for uh, MLS teams being able to kind of match up a little bit better against Liga MX teams. But uh, moving on from that, LA United 2, uh, yeah, I think it was, uh, let me check here. It was a, I believe, 1-1 one, one draw, thanks to Jackson Conway's, uh, his header, and uh, I, that was against Louisville City, I believe. Um, Nope, uh, hold on one second here. Yeah, uh, that was against Charleston Battery. Uh, and then against Tampa Bay Rowdies, un unfortunately, they lost 2-0. And then against Birmingham Legion, they lost, unfortunately, uh, last night I'm filming this on Thursday, a 4-0 loss. So, yeah, uh, have seemingly been in decent form, but the United 2, they are now sitting 6th in the Eastern Conference just out of a playoff spot there but uh so far lna2 has been playing a lot better than in recent years so we'll wrap the news up and get into the match a preview and uh, like i said on the top of the show phil union ppl park on saturday at 3 30 p.m and LA United will take on the philly union for the third time in 2021 uh yeah i mean the uh, yeah CCL matches definitely were not fantastic against them. Uh, we got exposed a little bit. So we were maybe a little reticent to actually play uh, and want to score. But uh, yeah, you know, the Philly Union, uh, in terms of last season, they of course won the Supporter Shield. Uh, they were eliminated by the New England Revolution 2-0 uh, in the playoffs. Uh, but the key acquisitions from last season, Stuart, or from the off season rather, Stuart Finley and Leon Flock. And key losses were, of course, Brennan Aronson, who went to RB Salzburg, and Mark McKenzie and Ray Gaddis. But uh, yeah, they're that type of team that, um, yeah, you know, they have a lot of guys in the prime of the careers. They have that strange formation in the diamond in their midfield. So it's definitely, you know, a team that uh, even though they're sitting right out of a playoff spot right now, uh, you know, they definitely have the goods to be able to get back into a playoff position. And uh, we should be very weary of them as 
They've kind of had our number recently, as in the last six matches, uh, Philly, they've won two, we've won only one, and there have been three draws, and they've had 10 goals to our seven in that time, so definitely, yeah, we have some work to do, and I think uh, us in good form, we should be able to rectify that. But uh, getting into their players to watch, Jamiro Montero, uh, yeah, he's been a perfect fit in their high energy system and uh yeah he has uh as a midfielder typically played as one of the two shuttlers in the 442 diamond uh and he has been adept as the number 10 as well of course andre blake one of the best goalkeepers in the league uh yeah he definitely stands on his head against any team and that's been pretty annoying uh and casper zerbilko uh, their forward, he, uh, of course, uh, tore us up on our right side, uh, against us when we were right back optional a little bit, and, uh, yeah, he, uh, he is one to watch for sure against the Philly Union, but getting into the injuries and availability, uh, out is El Senio with a hamstring, so, uh, their bench will be a little lighter, which is good. Uh, questionable is Sergio Santos with a calf injury. And for us, uh, Emerson Hyman is out, of course. Uh, Franco Ibarra still working his way back. Ronald Hernandez, uh, yeah, working his way back. Uh, we'll see if he takes a part. And Amar Sadic with a muscle injury, uh, also questionable. But another one that's questionable as well is Joseph Martinez uh, with his knee. Uh, so we'll see. So that gets us into the predicted starting 11. And Goose between the sticks. Uh, Robinson, Franco walks, I feel like, uh, will uh, yeah, take their place. Uh, walks comes back in for Campbell. Or uh, uh, Robinson comes back in for Campbell, rather. But uh, I think Lennon and Bello uh, stay in as the wingbacks. And Sosa and Hosetu are in the midfield here in this one where Moreno is our 10, uh, and Barco on the left here and uh, as a striker, and Luis Araujo also as a striker in that uh, match that's reminiscent of that Wednesday match where we played with uh, pretty much a false nine. I mean, Moreno as that, um, that false nine. But uh, Jose Martinez uh, probably will be, I think... Uh, maybe coming off the bench if he's available uh, and hopefully he is available because he will be chasing his 100th goal of uh, his club career uh, across all competitions pretty much he's at 99 so if he's able to do it it will be a great milestone for the mad king but uh, anyway Let's get into some of the match facts. So, LA United, they've won seven of their last eight matches in MLS. Scored at least three goals in the last three matches in MLS. And LA United have been winning at both halftime and full-time in five of the last six matches. And, uh, yeah, there have also been over two and a half goals scored in six of LA United's last seven away games. So, yeah, I think there's going to be some goals today <laughs> in, uh, on Saturday. But, so, I think... Uh, Getting into that score prediction, it will be a 2-2 draw, unfortunately, I feel like. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're able to, um, you know, do pretty well against uh, Philly Union here. But I think, uh, ultimately, without Joseph Martinez, um, you know, it, a lot of guys will have to step up. And so, yes, the uh, that trident of Moreno and Barco and Araujo, who are all in great form, should be able to uh, do pretty well and get us some goals. But I think, uh, yeah, you know, Philly, they're tough as well here. So uh, tough to kind of uh, maybe see the difference between the two uh, in terms of scoreline in this one. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. But that's pretty much the entire show except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, is Gonzalo Pineda starting to make you believe in him and the club? Let us know in the comments below. I mean, he's done a lot of goodwill in the past couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say he's definitely uh, getting us into kind of, at least in that kind of MLS pretender 
MLS contender territory. But let us know in the comments below what you think. But guys, that's it for us that's today. That's the episode. Remember, remember to like, share, comment, share this episode, subscribe. And review and I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks.